Hello, this is SpyMath342, and this is my first fanfic reading. It's, uh, gonna be Anthropology by Jason the Human. And, I'm gonna be honest, this is my, this is actually a read, a redo of the first chapter. And I know that I said it's a redo of the second chapter. Because I did it, no, I, re I read, I record it once, and then usually has a lot of mistakes, and I'll record it again. But I don't know if, oh, never mind. Well, let's just get to the story. So, chapter one. Music and magic. Just gotta get it loaded up. Okay. Chapter 1. Music and Magic. Are you gonna eat that? Lyra looked expectantly at the cake that was still on Bonbon's plate. Her roommate lifted a hoof to pull the plate a bit closer to her at the side of the table. Honestly, Lyra. Sorry, it's just been sitting there and... We just got a sugar cube corner five minutes ago, Bonbon said. And excuse me if I was a little shocked by how you inhaled yours. Coming here had become a tradition, something the two of them did very every weekend. Mr. and Mrs. Cake were some of the best bakers in Ponyville, if not of Equestria. For ponies who both loved sweets, it was a natural hangout. You think cake and candy are some kind of art form, don't you? It's what I make for a living. Of course there's an art to it, Bonbon said. And anyway, I've finally gotten a job interview scheduled with the owners, so before we know it, I might even be working here. That's nice. Will, I, will we get free cake then? Lara asked. Bonbon glared at her. Anyway, I heard you were invited to play at the Grand Galloping Gala this year. That's quite an honor, Bonbon said. She took a single bite of her cake enjoying it, and savoring the flavor, unlike a certain unicorn. Lyra nodded vigorously. Yeah, can you believe it? I'm not too good with formal events, though. I can imagine why Bonbon's attention was fixed on some chocolate frosting still hanging off ch Lyra's chin. Let's hope it doesn't turn out to be a disaster like it was last year. You heard about that, right? Lyra nodded. I never would have thought Fluttershy had it in her. It's always the quiet ones. Taking another small bite of her cake, Bonbon continued. So, have they told you what pieces you'll be performing? Do you know what you'll be wearing? Lyra shrugged. I don't know. Maybe a rarity. Incoming! They barely heard the buzz of the scooter approaching before it slammed into the table. Bonbon's cake was prepared directly into her face. Lyra attempted unsuccessfully to stifle a laugh. Scootaloo, are you sure that's gonna be your special talent? Applebloom said, walking towards the overturned table with Sweetie Belle at her side. Bonbon gaped at the three fillies, her face covered in frosting. What can I say? Sometimes it's better to finish quickly. Lyra shrugged. By the way... You've got a little something... She lifted a hoof to her own face. Right there. Bonbon had already snatched an, up a napkin and started wiping her, herself off. Sorry about that, Scootaloo said, shaking her head. She adjusted her helmet. I was going so fast at the time. Now I just need to work on my turns. She gave a weak smile. No problem. Lyra said. Bon Bon hesitated and took a deep breath. Y yes, no problem at all. Lighten up, they're just kids. Remember what it was like trying to get a cutie mark when you were that age? I don't blame them for trying all this crazy stuff. Sweetie Belle's face brightened up. Hey, we never asked how you got your cutie mark. Your talent is music, isn't it? 
She was staring at the golden harp on Lyra's flank. Yeah, actually, it took me a long time to get my cutie mark. It was back in Philly school, when I lived in Canterlot. I was one of the last in my class to get mine, you know. Laying awake in bed one night, heartstrings. She'd still have been calling herself heartstrings back then. I'd heard her parents talking about her. You know that heartstrings has been struggling in school. That was her mother. Some unicorns just take longer to learn magic, that's all. Things will come to her in time, she heard her father reply. But if it doesn't? It's been too long now. No magic, no cutie mark. What if all, what if it's all, because she's, heartstrings is a unicorn. That's that simple. It's that simple. It'll all come in time. Of course, even though she was a filly, Heartstrings knew that they had been talk what they had been talking about. Her mother was a Pegasus, but her dad was a unicorn. She had a horn, but she had never been able to use it. The other unicorns in her class had already mastered things like levitation, but she couldn't even lift a feather. She had to agree with her mother. What if she just couldn't learn magic? Her teacher, Indigo Spark, said that it didn't matter. If a pony had a horn, they were a unicorn. There wasn't such there wasn't such thing as half unicorn. But this wasn't the only time she had overheard her parents have the same conversation, and she still couldn't focus any power through her horn. Guinea marks and magic were still in heartstrings mind the next day in class. They had been brought to the music room instead of their usual classroom. Today we'll be working with the musical instruments. I'd like all of you to pick something out. We're just, pra we're just practicing today, so don't worry about sounding good. And he goes, Spark, watch this class as they inspected each instrument. Heartstrings tagged along after the rest of her classmates. Would she be any good at this? It looked like there was a tuba. Too big. A xylophone. It had a lot of keys. How would she handle that one? There were some drums. Those would be easy. Yes, Bluebell. That one's called a lyre. Heartstrings turned to see the teacher talking to a young navy blue unicorn. It's one of the more difficult instruments. It takes a lot of concentration to focus on moving each string to play even a simple song. How does it work? The filly asked. Focus your magic onto each string, and adjust the tension in order to make them in order to make them vibrate and create sound. Bluebell had already started, and what came wasn't exactly what came out wasn't exactly music in the strictest definition. Heartstrings winced at the noise and turned to look to look at a cello. Maybe that one would work. No, it was way too big. I think I'll take a different one, Bluebell said, turning away from the lyre. Something easier. Most of the instruments had already been taken. So much for drums, Harstrings thought. Wandering around the music room, between other young unicorns who were already trying out their instruments, Harstrings finally took a closer look at the lyre. No way. That one would be, definitely be too hard. Besides that explanation, besides that explanation mean, had made no sense. How are you supposed to create music if you only move each string by itself? If you plug them in a sequence, moving down the row, it was less of a matter of moving each string and more of something moving through them, plucking each one. A few notes played, soft but clear. A few more. It was beginning to sound like a simple melody, nothing too complicated, but musical all the same. Heartstrings closed her eyes, focusing on the notes. Yes, this is how a lyre was meant to be played. My heartstrings, you really seem to have a knack for that. Her eyes snapped open. The whole room had, had gone quiet. She tried to look at her horn on her on her forehead, 
and saw the edges of a lime green glow. It matched the glow surrounding the lyre. She slowly backed away from the lyre, feeling the eyes of every pony in the room watching her. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. That was truly impressive. I, um, I just thought there was probably a different way to play it. Simpler, Heartstring stammered. There's nothing wrong, Inigo, sa Inigo Spark said. Now, does every, every pony have an instrument chosen? Let's begin. Heartstrings glared at the golden instrument, and with some effort, managed to get it to float next to her. She was ecstatic. She felt like getting up and running straight to straight home to tell her parents, but class had already started. While the other Colton fillies struggled to create anything musical, Heartstrings was already grasping how to play this instrument. It was like she was born to play. When class was finally over, she noticed something different about herself, namely on her black leg. To say the least, her parents were pleased when she turned when she returned home that afternoon. Heartstrings thought her mother was going to faint after she saw her daughter's cutie mark, and she almost did after hearing a bit of what Heartstrings could do. Her father signed up, signed her up for music lessons right away. They were saying she was a prodigy. Maybe she was. Heartstrings didn't really care either way. The excitement of being able to do magic was enough for her. If I look like Heartstrings is going to grow up into a perfectly normal unicorn. Is it true what they say about ponies like that? Sweetie Belle asked. When their parents are two different kinds of ponies? I mean, I know it doesn't happen often, but you're great with magic, Lyra. Who knows? It took some practice, but I'm all right now, Lyra replied. And it just goes to show that everybody d gets their cutie mark eventually. I'm sure you'll all find yours soon enough. Bonbon bon had finished wiping the cake off her face and was in a better mood. You know, when I was about your age, that was the first time I ever learned how to use an oven. And, hey, music might work. Maybe we should try getting our band back together. Come on, Crusaders, Scootaloo said. The three of them disappeared in a yellow, orange, and white blur. What? Bonbon bon said. I didn't get I didn't even get a chance to tell my cutie mark story. Kids in their short tension spans. She turned her she turned her head. Lyra? There was a fork hovering in the air in front of Lyra's face, and she was inspecting it curiously. She turned at the sound of her name, and the fork dropped to the ground. Huh? Oh, never mind. Let's go home. Music played softly in the distance. A familiar sound of the darkness. Did she know this song? She couldn't quite... She couldn't quite... She, uh, she couldn't quite name it. She couldn't name it. Then, a figure. But it wasn't a pony. That much was clear. It was... Yes. Lyra start, started to move towards it for a better look. The darkness was fading away until she could start to make out the details. She had a, she had just a glimpse before. She hit the bedroom floor with a thud, giving her rude awakening from, from the dream. But she still had the image in her mind. Lyra stared up at the ceiling, her back on the floor and her legs sticking straight up in the air. The covers from her bed were still partially draped over her. It... It all makes sense now, she grinned. How did, not, how did I not see this before? This had to be documented. Picking herself up from the floor, off the floor, Lyra raced down to the hall and found her journal in the office. Levitating it down from the shelf, she quickly started sketching the nearest quill with the nearest quill she could find. Lyra? I heard a crash. Are you all right? Bonbon bon water wandered into the room, rubbing her eyes. She stared at Lyra and the glowing quill scratching madly on the, at the page. 
what are you doing? They designed it. It was meant for them to play, not us, Lyra muttered, not taking her eyes off the journal. It all makes so much sense. Bonbon bon shook her head and washed over her roommate's shoulder. Some kind of figure was taking shape. It was holding a lyre in what seemed to be arms. The shape of the body wasn't one that Bonbon bon had ever seen before. Maybe similar to a baby dragon, like the one that lived with Twilight Sparkle, but the limbs were elongated. The strings are much easier to pluck if you have fingers. I think it's similar to how I play, actually. What I, what I imagine while I'm doing it, at least. Lyra continued sketching. Bonbon bon couldn't tell if Lyra was explaining it to her or if she was talking to herself. They're too close together to play very well with hooves, and it wouldn't make much sense for ponies to design an instrument that they, that could only be played with magic. Lyra, is this another one of your theories about those? Bonbon voice. Bonbon's voice trailed off into a yawn. Humans, of course. Lyra nodded. She dropped the quill, and looked up. Humans invented lyres. Can you believe it? I have, I have, I've had the work on my flank for years, I, and I never even realized it. She grinned widely, looking at the image of the harp on her back leg. You're sure? Bon Bon let out another yawn. You actually think this was invented by some kind of a, what was it again? If you knew... Where to look, you'd realize humans left their work all over equestrian civilization. Ponies weren't the first to establish society. It's all because of humans, and weren't just borrowing it. Bob on stared at Lyra, not understanding how any pony could be awake and so energetic at three in the morning. And she was on one of her human rants again. Not that Bon Bon had any idea what a human was, but apparently, Lara had a strange obsession with him. Some kind of obscure, mythical being that was referenced in some old books. And that's all they were. A myth. No pony had ever seen a real human before. Just go to bed, Bon Bon said. She turned around and headed back to her room. Lara's grin vanished and she looked back at her drawing. She had put mu as much detail as she could find in the, the way the hands held the instrument and the way the fingers moved along each individual string. It all seemed to work so well. There had been less attention to the face and the rest of the body, just a rudimentary torso and legs. Already the details of the dream were fading from her mind. It wasn't the first dream Lyra had about humans. They happened sporadically, usually in groups. She could expect several more hazy, indistinct dreams over the next few nights. Her journal was filled with as much as she could remember from them. I know humans used to exist, Lyra muttered. Maybe not anymore, but they were real. She took one last glance at the figure she had drawn, playing a liar as she herself often did, but this was the right way to play one, the way it had been it had been intended. Then she closed the cover and lifted the book back onto the shelf. For the rest of the night, Lyra couldn't remember if she had any more dreams.